Alrighty, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to part two of the MOSFET gate driver circuit. This is a, a new series, I think I'm gonna call it circuit improvement projects. So basically we took a look at the problem that occurs whenever you have a MOSFET, parasitic components on our MOSFET. Um, like I said, here's actually a good graph we can look at too, is the ringing that occurs um, is one of them, right? The ringing that's experienced whenever our VGS pin tries to pull the signal low. And then also the inrush of current we get whenever the um, drive pin tries to send the signal high, right? That's the result of the parasitic capacitor. So where I left off was I kind of posed the question, okay, well, how do you think we're going to solve these? two problems we have um, because maybe you kind of can already can already guess one of the ways the most fantastic ways to limit current every electrical engineer knows is that uh, we're going to introduce a current limiting resistor right so for right now let's just focus on solving the problem the first problem we listed which is that we're getting a current spike so pretty obvious easy solution is just add a current limiting resistor so what we're going to do is check the data sheet of whatever your drive source is. So like in our case, our driver is actually the flyback controller IC, right? So that thing is actually sending a signal. In this case, uh, the data sheet says it's about 14 volts is what it, it goes to. Uh, it's clamped at 14 volts. And specifically what it also says is depending on your VDD line, that changes a little bit but don't worry just assume it's 14 volts in this case and then it also says um, well let's just say our our drive current uh, source capacity is set at like 300 milliamps right so basically what we'll do is we're just going to solve for what's the appropriate value for our current current limiting resistor we're going to use r equals v over i to calculate the appropriate value so in this example i have listed down here we have V drive, which is just the voltage of our drive source. 14 volts is a very common voltage because a lot of MOSFETs um, operate at around 10 volts. And so you want to drive it uh, just clearly above that level so that you can achieve the, con the conductivity that you want, the conduction level, the current carrying capacity that you want. So 14 volts is a pretty common value. Um, IMAX, I just sourced, I just looked up a couple different for this example, I mean, um, just just so I'm presenting numbers that are, you know, feasible and might actually you might actually encounter. Um, so when we do that, we solve for an R value of forty six point six seven. So let's see, if we can find. There's a good example. So this is, I guess, this is the circuit that they use. But try to. This is kind of confusing. But try to just. Block out everything right here and just know that this value right here will limit the current to the gate. And imagine the 14 volt source is just coming from right here. And basically what this is doing is just preventing that inrush spike from occurring because it'll, it'll cap, this resistor will cap the inrush current to a level that is manageable by our drive pin, right? Because we just calculated that our drive pin can manage 300 milliamps. So with a 46.67 ohm resistor there, we know we're, we'll be safe, right? We're not going to have to deal with those prematurely failing components that we talked about earlier. Um, so that's good, right? So problem, first problem solved. Actually, we're kind of smooth sailing. Um, you know, I think we're ready for the next problem now. So problem two is we want to introduce... Uh, so problem two, right? Remember problem two was that we're experiencing ringing. I even showed these pictures, right? I actually literally just went through that uh, diagram on the data sheet right the ringing and I said that's because of the LC circuit that is created between the source inductance and the input capacitance that are both part of the parasitic component profile I guess you could say for our MOSFET and I showed you a, a uh, and uh, I guess you could say a um, an equivalent circuit diagram that is also presented by I don't know if it was, it was yeah right here right Let's show you this. So this is the circuit we're solving for, and we want to proper. We basically want to properly dampen this circuit when we have these component values. And as you can see, they give you this wonderful equation here, which is two times 
the square root of the quantity source inductance divided by input capacitance minus R drive and RGI. So here I have the same equation here. I just have the variables listed out for what they are. Um, so I said LS is, like I said, it's the source inductance. CISS is the input capacitance. That's where you find that number in the data sheet. Oh, I should make note. So LS source inductance. You read somewhere, and I actually have this other, this is where I have all these data sheets pulled up, is because this right here, uh, if you just search for, I think, source in, I don't know, for something about, I think it, I, might, might, I might be wrong on which data sheet. Um, but it tells you it's basically, so this might not be the right data. Oh yeah, here you go, short source inductance, but I think, right? So detailed mathematical put, or for that. Typical DPAC MOSFET package, blah, blah, blah. So basically what this does, what this data, what this uh, little paper basically says uh, right here, actually. So it has to do a lot with the device package that the MOSFET comes in. And what device package is right here, right? So you'd see the package, um, I think, yeah. So here it says package, supplier device package. It's an IPAC, right? So that's where I found that little tidbit of information. Sorry about that. Uh, right here, right? So it says, IPAC have a source inductance between 1.5 nanohenries to 7 nanohenries. And then also, uh, make sure it says, make sure to account for the 5 and 10 nanohenry nano printed circuit board trace inductance. So that's where I got those numbers from. So we're, we're using these as, as estimates. Um, because we're kind of, we're going to develop a range of values for our resistor. And when it says CIS is input capacitance, so with that, let's see, I found that in the data sheet as well. I think I might even list the input capacitance. Input capacitance, CIS max, is 485 picofarads. So that's where I got that value from. Now, I will admit R drive and RGI, which is R drive is the resistance of the drive pin, and... RGI is the internal gate resistance of the FET, which is also the MOSFET. FET is short for MOSFET. Um, I, I just estimated those because they're, they're a little bit tricky to find, I'll be honest, but I think you could safely estimate them to, I estimated them at one ohm each, and honestly that could even be a little high. So um, you could, it could be like 500 milliohms or something like that. Um, so, but yeah, so that's for this example, I just estimated them to each be one ohm. So in our example, when we plug in the numbers, we're using the lower bound for our source inductance, we get 5.322 ohms, and the upper bound, we get 9.841 ohms. So by now, if you're extremely brilliant, you might be panicking just a little bit. And why might you be panicking? Well, it's because you know math and you know that 9.84 does not equal 46.6. So what are we supposed to do? We have to limit the current to our MOSFET or else our drive pin is just going to explode and it's going to crap out. It's going to look like Gary after freaking SpongeBob tried to try to make him prep for that snail race. You remember that? That's what that's what our that's what our flyback controller is going to look like. Poor Gary the snail. And then Rocky's going to end up winning freaking race um but however however we also know that we need to properly we it's equally as important to properly dampen out the ringing on the signal because we have all sorts of problems with power you know power losses on the mosfet um it'll just interfere with the quality of our signal if we don't dampen the ringing so what do we do how are we supposed to solve this problem and that is where i bring you the brilliant solution on this Toshiba paper that I've been referencing for the whole video. And that is uh, Toshiba, this is Toshiba. And it, what, what, what level, which one? Okay, this one right here, right? That is, boom, right here. Take a look at it, this is brilliant. I think it's brilliant, okay. So we're looking at three diagrams right here. Let's take it easy and let's start at the left one because I would consider the one on the far left is your this is the starting point for all of all the circuit that you will design that will control help control our gate signal okay if you can see so this little dot on the left represents the drive signal and the this is obviously the gate right here on on the right hopefully this is 
you recognize a MOSFET if you're watching this video. Um, so the diode, right, what the diode does is that whenever the drive signal, whenever this, this part is high and this part is low, right, so the drive signal is trying to drive this pin high, the current's only going to flow through this resistor, i.e., what you do is you put your current limiting resistor up here because in this, whenever this part is high, current's only going to flow through this resistor right here. So you can place your current limiting resistor here, and that will effectively limit the current. So in that example, put the 46 milliohm or put 46 ohm resistor up here, and then on the flip side, right, whenever the, whenever you're trying to drive it low, so what happens is is whenever the signal is trying to be driven low, what happens is you have the gate which is high, and then you have this is low, so the current's going to flow backwards, right? Those that parasitic capacitance is going to push current backwards. And what you do is you put your resonant, you put your damping or dampening, damping resistor right here, right? So this is where that uh, 9.84 ohm resistor would go, right? So hopefully that makes sense. And what these are actually referred to is the R on and R off, right? And so that allows you to um, precisely control the envelope, the, the rise and the fall of your signal, right? You basically get the best of both worlds in this case. You get to properly dampen and your signal on the, on the pull down side and then you get to safely um excite or or safely uh supply current on the high side right so it's, it's a brilliant solution and just a quick explanation of where where these come from is in some cases your the value of this resistor it's okay to let it experience both both sides the on and the off portion of it because like say the resistor value say this a lot of cases you'll see something like this resistor is like 40 ohms and then this resistor is only like four ohms, right? So you get the mass, the vast majority of current flows. Uh, well, I guess in this case, it would be a little bit backwards. Um, no, well, in this case, it would. I'm talking about this one in that case. Sorry, I'm, this is con I'm confusing you probably. Uh, but basically what, what the gist is, is that in some cases, it's okay to let one of the resistors experience both sides of it. It doesn't affect the signal too, too much. And as a result, you can reduce the amount of power dissipation in your circuit when the gate drive circuit because you still have to you're still getting uh switching losses on these diodes right um because you have to excite the diode to allow current to conduct so if you can reduce one you can reduce the amount of power consumption and then also you can just reduce the footprint um it's one less component in there it's a little bit cheaper so you have some benefits that way so if you can only use if you only have to use one diode um, then that's that's even better so I think that's uh, enough time for this video. So in part three, I'll actually take a look at our specific application circuit and I'll show you um, how we actually attain the, 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 the gate resistor circuit that we're looking for. So um, yeah, stay tuned and thanks.